That's right, people. It's Wednesday night, 9 o'clock, True Radio on WLVS Radio, coming to you live down here in the city. You see I got my man DC People's Champ to the right of me. What up, though? What's going on tonight, fam? Ain't too much, man. Just listening to this Wizards team basically choke on a fat one right now. Hey, man, we uh, we, we kind of get used to that with the Wizards and everything. You know, Pretty we much. got some breaking trade news that I uh, broke uh, right on my way down here to the studio tonight. Mm-hmm. But uh, before you wonder where everybody is, you know, she does not here. You don't see black GOP, but don't fret. They will be here shortly because we do have a special guest interview tonight. He's just come in the building. So, yeah, it's going to be a great show tonight. I love that you guys are tuned in. Check us out. Check out the YouTube channels. We do it live every week, bring you the freshest news, sports, current events, politics, and all that. But we're going to start it out with my bread and butter, the sports. We all know we had the Super Bowl 53 this past week. A lot of folks were calling it a boring Super Bowl and said it would it was uh you know one of the worst ones ever. I'm sure you loved it as a defensive person. Brother, you know I loved it. I was sitting on the couch curled up under my blanket with the lights out with my snacks, man, chilling, man, just enjoying it, man. Okay, I didn't really need to know that you were hey, man, in the dark. I'm I just saying, okay. man, they don't understand how good it was to see real football strategy, the chess match between Belichick and uh Wade Phillips between Sean McVay and, you know, all of the intricacies and you see all of the, the moves that they were making trying to outsmart the other one. It was a beautiful thing to watch. And for it to be 13 to 3, I mean, that's that's beautiful football. I, I can't say anything else about it, man. A lot of people, a lot of people were out there saying <laughs> it shouldn't have been the Rams, it should have been the Saints because it would have been a better game. I tend to agree with you that a game like that where it was all about defense. It was all about keeping two very high-power offenses in check, Mm -hmm. and it came down to defense. I think that's the way a football game, especially a football game of this magnitude, should be. It shouldn't be one of those situations where it's like every possession you're scoring touchdowns, scoring touchdowns. You know, most people love that, but, I mean, this is, like you said, it's It's entertaining, but it's not Yeah, it's entertaining, but pure football was displayed. I, you know, I listened to it, watched it. I wasn't too interested, but when you think about it, it's like, okay, this is pure football because you have the two top 10 offenses Mm. in the league, but they only scored a combined 16 16 points points. in an entire game. That just is a testament to how good their defenses are. Yeah, and the folks making that New Orleans Saints comment, oh, they would have put up more than three points. They would have scored a touchdown. If you watch what Belichick has done throughout the playoffs this year, we, I spoke about it last week with Kansas City when he held them to zero points for the whole first half and made Tyreek Hill disappear. He, he's he been in this defensive zone this whole playoff stretch. And I mentioned that before that I saw him basically shutting down McVay and fooling the young quarterback because that's what he's known for. He makes all young quarterbacks look foolish. And – even if it was Drew with their offense, the way their defense was keyed in and the way they were uh, operating as a unit, as a whole team, I, I don't think it would have been a different outcome. I think the Patriots still would have won the game. It might have been more points scored, but I still think the Patriots would have came out on top. And I think they're they're in a good position to <laughs> – with Tom Brady saying he's not going to retire until he's 45, they're in a good position to go back and do it again. Yeah, I mean – with Tom Brady, and the and the thing about the Patriots, especially with Tom Brady, is he's not like a lot of these quarterbacks where he has six rings and he wants like the Brinks truck backed up to his house. Mm-mm. This dude is taking haircut after haircut after haircut to make sure that there are pieces around him to win more championships. Mm-hmm. This guy now has more Super Bowl championships than any player, quarterback or otherwise, in the history of the NFL. He has six now. The next closest, I believe, was Charles Haley, who has five. Yeah, Haley has five. That's but nice. now Tom Brady has six. And you want to know the funny shit? I read a, I didn't, I read a story earlier. Mm-hmm. Tom Brady hates being called the GOAT. Really? He hates it. He says it makes him cringe when people call him the GOAT. <laughs> He's like, no, I want people to say I'm trash so I can prove him wrong. But that's that six-round pick mentality. you know. Yeah. That, that's what makes, in my opinion, him so great because he was a six-round pick. No one expected anything out of him. And, you know, he's coming to a team. You know, Drew Bledsoe got hurt. 
That's how the story normally goes for someone to, you know, aspire to great things. And no matter who he's had in the on the offensive line, offensive backfield, lining up on the outside or on the defense, they've always found a way to win. And this one was different. Like all of them have been different, but they actually had a running game in this with this runner they went on. They were averaging 125 yards rushing a game. You put that with Belichick's defensive, you know, genius along with Tom Brady, I mean, it's like it's an uphill perfect, battle. You had the perfect recipe for, for success, and that's what, you know, that's what it would show with the Patriots. I'm pretty sure 95% of the country were all on suicide watch when yep. that game was over. Oh, I mean, boy, the conspiracy theories and everything that came out. I was like, really? Is. I'm like, come on, man. It is you you got to respect the greatness. You might not like them, but you got to respect it. I mean, come on. I mean, I'm not a big Patriots fan either, but just watching how they carried themselves with that game and uh, against the Rams who, who Rams team who did have someone on their roster that's been to a Super Bowl. I didn't know this last week when we talked about it, mm-hmm. but I found out they mentioned it on Westwood One. Shout out to Westwood One. Uh, I believe it was, uh, I think it was Brandon Cooks. I think it was Brandon oh, Cooks because yeah, he, yeah, played, yeah. he played he with played the Patriots. He played with the Patriots last year, yeah. In, in the Super Bowl. I think, so, wasn't uh, Ain't Talib on that defense? A, a, a key to leave? Yeah. yeah. They, I think I think a key to leave has been to a Super Bowl. He went with the remember. Patriots too, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> so you had two guys on there that knew, knows what the magnitude of the Super Bowl was. I, we didn't know this last week, but yeah. it would have made more sense. But either way, defense, like the old saying goes, defense offense gets the glory, defense wins championships. And Man, that was proven on that's Sunday. That's what it was. Can we talk about how trash the Wizards are? Yeah, I was about to wrap up. That's the NFL season for, uh, you know, Patriots are the champions. We'll be looking at it next year. Make sure you tune in to Sports on the Hill podcast on Monday nights for the draft uh, updates, NCAA updates, and all that good stuff that we cover with our insider that we have that covers all of that info. Now let's go ahead. I guess, yeah, I guess we go ahead and get it to the Wizards. And right now, the, the Wizards are getting their asses handed to them 80 to 55. Mm. You're hearing 80 points. It's like, whoa, they must be in the third or fourth quarter. No, they haven't even reached halftime yet. And the Bucks have 80 points. What is it? It's after the trade with their, their short players, So, right? yeah. Yeah. So, oh, Otto, okay. right now, he's out for, quote, unquote, personal reasons. Oh, but yeah. a report from the Athletics said that he is being traded to Chicago for uh, Bobby Portis and Jabari Parker. Now, Jabari Parker might be a name that a lot of NBA people know. Uh, he spent... A lot of his career in Milwaukee, how funny is that? Hmm. They're playing Milwaukee and that happened. He's played most of his career in Milwaukee, and this is his first season in Chicago. Hmm. He has a career average. He averages 15 points uh, in his career, 15 points per game, six, almost six rebounds a game, and two assists per game. So he's a productive player. Hmm. So I think he will definitely bring something to the table. Does he play defense? That's that's going to be the question that needs to be answered nah. if he plays defense. Um, the one thing, though, is that, you know, I'm shocked that, that Chicago's going to take on that contract of Otto Porters because, remember, the Wizards had to match mm-hmm. what the Brooklyn Nets were offering Porter to keep him. Mm-hmm. But the problem with Porter, he can't stay healthy. Mm. And if he can stay healthy, and me and you talked about this earlier – if he can stay healthy, he can be a player. No doubt. With the right team and the right system, he yeah. can be a player. But he has to stay healthy. True, true. Speaking Let's... of staying healthy, though. Oh, hey, John. Boy. <laughs> John. Wall. Yeah, we broke that news Wall, yesterday. Wall star. It's, it's... How, you, how clumsy are you? You fall in somewhere in your house and you rupture your Achilles. But this John, isn't the first time this had happened in D.C. sports. Remember, Mr. D'Angelo Wall. Hall did the same thing after he ruptured his Achilles the year before he Johnny ruptured w. the other one at home. Come on, man. So you were already out for the season getting burn spurs fixed in your heel. So you then wouldn't you turn- rupture your Achilles is why they had the surgery to try to prevent his Achilles from rupturing is why they put him out for the rest of the season. And then he still ruptures and it And then he still home. ruptures it So home. now he won't be back until February or March of next year. Oh, my God. I swear, this DC the <sighs> DC sports curse. People don't believe that it, there's a DC sports curse. I still this should can't be believe. proof positive. I there's still a DC can't sports believe. curse. I still can't believe it's a curse, man. I still can't, I still can't go with that vibe. My nigga, I'm trying to tell I'm you. I'm saying I can't. I mean, these, these guys got these fancy bathrooms, marble floors. They get wet. They slip. That's probably what happens, man. Because that's what D'Angelo Hall said that happened. He was playing around. He slipped on some water on his floor. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, it's it's tragic. 
because I'm a John Wall fan. I'm not a real basketball fan, but I, when he came into the league, I didn't think that he had the maturity or the mentality to be an NBA player. And to me, he's definitely matured on the court and off the court. He hasn't been in any trouble. He's kept his nose clean for the most part. And, you know, I feel like that he's, you know, a quality player on this team, but you got to stay healthy. And I believe the numbers on this next contract was, what, $38 million, $40 million, yeah, and $44 they're gonna, million? Yeah, they're going to start going north of $40 million starting next year because that's when his, extent, his super match extension kicks in. So he's going to go from making close to $20 million to making almost $40 million starting next year. And, by, and the problem with that, though, is that, again, when his, when his extension starts, picks up and kicks in next year, he's going to be spending half the season on the bench recovered from this Achilles injury. Well, so they're basically about to spend $40 million for this nigga to be only on the court for half the season. I mean, I'm not familiar with <laughs> so, the NBA salary cap, but I know these salaries have you know gotten crazy because well, I'm a critic of Bradley here's a, Bill. And his like I said, here's the thing is that really the NBA doesn't really have a salary cap. What they have is a luxury, luxury tax, tax, which means that if you spend more than what you're bringing in, you get charged a luxury tax. And apparently the Wizards must have the money somewhere because they were able to land this Supermax as well as pay Bill over 100 mil over his period of time and Porter, even though now they've shipped Porter off and got that contract off the books. But still, it... I mean, it's 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 Ernie, man. We've I've I like I said, I don't even follow the team that closely, but I know that Ernie is the root of it because I saw the same thing with Ted Leonsis with his GM. Um, I don't forgot his name that quick. I just had him took my talk. George uh, George McPhee. George McPhee. When he stuck with him for so long, because the Caps had good teams, he was loyal to him, and in the first year that he get rid of him. And uh, and McClellan takes over. They win the Stanley Cup. Not saying if they get rid of Ernie, they're going to win the NBA championship. But it might be a step in the right direction. Definitely is going to be a step in the right direction because this team has been chasing a quality big man since I was a Bullets fan back in the day. Mm -hmm. And it's it's sad, you know, that they haven't been able to get one and keep one here. We know I talk about Chris Webber and Juwan how we all know the story behind their their departure, or most of us know the real story behind their departure. But uh, it, it, it's sad to see that this franchise is in the position that it's in when they were that close, you know, a few years ago to the Eastern Conference Finals, making it to the, you know, to the uh, championship round and to fall back down to what they're in 10th place, 23 and 31 or something right now, I think. And it, it's uh, hopefully they can get it together. But uh, we're going to end this sports segment on a high note, talking about the on other the sports note. team that's uh, going on at Washington Capitals. Uh, we mentioned last show they were on a seven-game losing streak before the All-Star break, but they came out the break, uh, won the first game against Calgary 4-3 without Alex Ovechkin. They had a a, a great game and uh, had a great game. They, it was a total team effort. They fought hard, and they uh, prevailed in the end. Then they had a game on Super Bowl Sunday against Boston, who they had a 14-game winning streak against, was looking to extend it to 15, but – uh, unfortunately, Boston came out, wanted a little bit more. Tuka Rash shut out the Caps, won to nothing for Super on the Super Bowl Sunday. You know, I think he had a little chip on his shoulder because he uh, was supposed to start the game where they lost the 14th straight to the Caps, but they started uh, Halak, and Halak got lit up for four goals and they lost the game. So he had a little uh, something to prove, and that win made him the all-time winning this uh, goalie in Boston Bruins history. So he uh, definitely put his best foot forward and uh, played very well that game. Did you uh, get a chance to check that game out before I, the Super Bowl? I was not able to check it out, but I will say uh, Tuka Rask, in my opinion, from what I've seen from him in Boston, he is pushing – he's almost pushing the comp to being like another uh, Dominic Hasek, the dominator, almost, mm. almost. In my opinion, I, I may be wrong, but I feel as though, because like I said, I, I came up in the era with the hockey of the, the Dominic Hasek's, the uh, yeah. Ole Kos, Ole, uh, Olaf Kozik, Ole the goalie, Jim Carrey, both the last two I just named were former Caps uh, goalies. Uh, I came up during that era, Char mm. uh, Osgood, those guys. Tuka Rass really did have something to prove. In that game, because every time he seen the face of Cavs, they used they would just light his ass up. So he definitely has something to prove oh, here, he, and he proved it. But all in all, the Cavs look like they're starting, starting to pick up momentum after oh, yeah. being on a seven game a winless streak. Mm -hmm. They're starting to pick it up, and they're picking it up 
almost at the right time. Almost oh, yeah. at the right time. Just like last season. That's why I was telling folks that was all up in arms, you know, talking about, you know, something needs to happen. Something. They said the same thing last year. They made a few subtle trades, and then everything fell into place. The team started playing as a unit, played defense, and played hard-nosed hockey, and they went on the run for the uh, for the championship. The thing that I want to talk about is the trade deadline coming up. Because, honestly, I am sick of Andre Burakovsky. <laughs> and I started a hashtag today. <laughs> if you checked out the page, I want Jay Beagle back. They had the game against Vancouver last night, which the Caps prevailed 3-2 to two on a crazy late goal by Drake Abron where he actually flipped the puck over the top of the net. It bounced on the top of the net. Kuzi was trying to bat it, which if he would have, it would have been a high stick and it would have stopped play. But it ironically hit the uh, top of the net and bounced over Kuzi's puck, hit the goalie in the back and goes in for uh, a late goal. That, that the was Caps wild. Would have, yeah, it was, a, it was a crazy play. But sometimes, like I say, puck luck is something that you have to worry about in hockey because you can be playing your ass off for 59 minutes and something crazy happening at one minute and you lose the game. But uh, Facts. I definitely think that Jay Beagle, you know, because our face-off percentage has dropped with him. He was the best face-off center, even though he was on the fourth line. I think he was at like 83% at one point in the season last year. And that's been one of the weaknesses of the, of the Caps this year. And his grittiness, his hustle, and just the way that, you know, he knows how to, he plays 200 feet. He plays defense, and when he's in the offensive zone, he's a hard-nosed player. Andre Burakovsky, he does what he does. He shows flashes, gets benched, come out there plays good after he gets benched and you don't hear from him. for. He has six goals this season. Six. Jacob Ron in his second season has 16. He's already broken his career high from the year before when he had 15. Yeah, I think, I think they, they do need to move on from Burakovsky. And um, I, 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 I kind of like Burakovsky, but as you mentioned, and I'm definitely in agreement with that, he definitely – uh, seems to not can keep any consistency when it comes Good. to his work and his play on the ice. Exactly. And you need that in order to be a, a good player in the NHL. you no, got to be consistent. And if you're not consistent, if you have to be put inactive for several games to wake your ass up, then you don't need to be in this league, point blank, period. I agree 100%. That's what I say. Potential has gotten many coaches fired. He's shown potential. Everybody brings up last uh, Stanley Cup run when he had the two goals in the clinching uh, game seven game. Yeah, that's the one bright spot in his, what, six-year career here. And it's a contract year. So I say if you can package him in a deal, get him out of here and get somebody in here quality, cool. But I think at best he's a KHL player. He's not big enough, strong enough to be in the NHL because he does the same thing, turn the puck over when he gets in the corner. He has great speed and he has a great shot, but he rarely takes it. He passes the puck too much. He gives up the puck in the, in the corners too much when they uh, try to get their cycle game going. And he's a casualty. I mean, he's a yeah, well casualty on, on defense because he doesn't play it. Simple as that. Bird. Yeah, no, I mean, that's just basically the bottom line. But as we mentioned earlier, this team is definitely starting to peak at the right time. Most definitely. And they def definitely have to keep the run going if they want to be able to defend that Stanley Cup that they won uh, last year. So let's, oh, yeah. see how, let's see what happens. Oh, they're let's see in what second happens. place. Uh, they leapfrogged Pittsburgh last night, who got shut out by Carolina, which Fuck is always Pittsburgh. a good thing. Fuck Pittsburgh. And uh, they're a point behind the Islanders because the Islanders also lost last night. So within that, they went tied for a second underneath for Pittsburgh. And then one night, they then went from they went to that to one point behind first place. So, awesome. You know, they're making moves. They're going to, you know, get it together. If they do make a move, they trade their line cool. I hope they do. Like I say, get Andre out of there. Then you can get one of these other guys that's playing well or trade for whoever you do, and then he comes in and fills in that spot. But uh, this team is definitely on the right track. I'm not in panic mode, and I think they are going to be able to defend their Stanley Cup title and hopefully make it back and do back-to-back. -back. Yeah, exactly, but, you know. Guys, I, I, this capital stock is the street. <laughs> this nigga here. This capital oh, stock is amazing. Uh-huh. Um, so Ovechkin plays for the Penguins, right? No, he plays for the Cap, the Stanley oh. Cup champion. Oh, okay. Hey, yo, this nigga okay. got more salt and pepper in his head than a steak and cheese out of a carryout. What the fuck that, is this nigga that was doing? Because right, they actually don't use salt and pepper and steak and cheese. Nigga. <laughs> they do uh, actually, you might nigga. Have a lighter. Bike check. <laughs> no, a lighter. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, just, just to just to pop in. You guys are all in because our shit is just 
<laughs> not, not is. I'm trying to figure out what the hell she is wearing. Like, look like she ain't wearing nothing at all. <laughs> what is she a Power Ranger? What is she the S and M Power Ranger? With this bitch? God damn. Anyway, well, we'll get back to the show as we were interrupted on that quick break by <laughs> that masked man who will be back soon. Yes, indeed. But, is it uh, okay if I talk a little bit of wrestling? Sure, why not? Okay. What what's going on in the wrestling world? I, I flipped through on Monday night the other night. I saw some. Uh, I saw uh, Kurt Angle was a. Uh, Wrestling somebody for the general general manager spot or something. What, um, what's going so on? okay, so just a little bit of a timeline. Uh, last weekend was WrestleMania weekend. Mm. I talked about it briefly on my podcast, No Spots Podcast, comes on Friday nights at nine on the True Radio Network. Ding. Um, talked about Royal Rumble weekend takeover NXT takeover Phoenix was an amazing event. You saw uh, two new champions crown. Uh, Royal Rumble was a good was a good event. Uh, R- Seth Rollins won the men's Royal Rumble and picked Brock Lesnar. As his opponent at WrestleMania. Mm. Uh, Becky Lynch won the Women's World Rumble and picked Ronda Rousey as her opponent at WrestleMania. Uh, though now they're doing a storyline where yeah. Becky Lynch has an injured knee. Yeah, I was going to ask you, I saw her limping, but she beat the hell out of Stephanie. Though. Yeah, well, <laughs> what happened was is that she's playing this angle where her knee is injured and Stephanie, trying to play the concerned boss, mm-hmm. is telling her she needs to go to the doctor and if she doesn't, she was going to suspend her. And Becky Lynch... This is the funny shit about this whole situation. They're almost trying to make Becky Lynch like the female Stone Cold against Vin- the the female version of Stone Cold versus Vince McMahon. It was a success- successful storyline. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was a very successful storyline, and I think they're trying to replicate that now. Well, but she told her she was suspended, and Becky Lynch beat the hell out of her. And then she came out on SmackDown the next night and got in the Charlotte's face. Triple H came out, oh. told her, go to the doctor or go home. And then uh, she made a comment about Steph, how Steph, you know, this, that, and the third. So Trips got in the ring. And, of course, Trips had to go in on her. <laughs> and she just looked at Trips, slapped the shit out of him. Oh, and then they man. were face-to-face. And it was intense. I got to tell you, like, right now with the road to WrestleMania, they're really starting to pick up in terms of the... Uh, just the qual- overall quality mm-hmm. in terms of the storylines and angles. Uh, Raw starting to see more matches. Well, not really more matches, but you're starting to see a lot more action. Mm-hmm. The problem is that they have not a lot of matches, but these matches run very long to the point that they have to go on commercial breaks at least twice yeah, with one match. That does get that, boring. That, that kind of loses, lo- loses the luster because you're sitting there watching. It's like, ooh, okay, cool. Next thing you know, they go in a rest hole. They go to commercial. It's just like... Then you got to wait for the replay to say, well, this is what you missed when you went to a commercial. I remember back in the day, not to go off on a tangent, but I remember back in the days of the old WCW uh, where they actually used to tell people, it's like, we're going to go to a commercial break. If this match ends while we're in commercial, we'll show you how it ended. And there been, there were a couple times where the match ended while they were at commercial break oh, and wow. they had to show the replay. So I remember those days. Nowadays, that don't happen. Nowadays, you go to commercial break, they come back, they're in a rest hole because yeah. <laughs> they did something for the live crowd and then they're in a rest hole when they get back. So, yeah. But I mean, right now, it's a lot going on with WWE right now. Daniel Bryan, who's a WWE champion over on SmackDown, he's actually has a elimination chamber. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. How, what? I thought he. Hold on. Last I checked, he was like the general manager. Then he couldn't wrestle more because his neck was bad. When did he come? No, back? he he had a he had a series of concussions, but he worked himself. He worked out. Mm-hmm. He got medically cleared. He was still a general manager, but he made his return last year at WrestleMania. Wow. And because he was become back going back to active wrestling, he stepped down as general manager. Wow. And now he is the WWE champion. Jeez. He's a heel also, which is awesome. Uh, he's a heel. He's actually this environmentalist heel. Oh, he God. actually turned the WWE championship into an environmentally safe championship. <laughs> you got to look it up. Oh, I'm going to show it to you at the break. That shit is hilarious. Wow. But he's going to be in an elimination chamber in a couple of weeks against AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, uh, Mustafa Ali from 205 Live, Randy Orton, and Jeff Hardy. I miss for the man, WWE title. Randy. I miss my man Randy on Raw. I got keep on forgetting he on SmackDown. That's my I used to man the RKO from anywhere, man. He, he hit the, he hit the RKO out of nowhere <laughs> yesterday on Mustafa <laughs> Ali to get the victory. It was cool. Oh, but man. uh but yeah, no, that's that's basically what's going on in wrestling. And if you want to hear more, all you gotta do is turn tune in. True Radio Network, 9 p.m. on Fridays, No Spots Podcast, and we'll give you all the wrestling news and tidbits and everything like that. Wrestling nerdery at its finest. All right, well. We see we got everything's lined up for the second half of the show. We're going to get ready to go to a quick break, get set up for the second half with some 
little bit of politics and a great interview coming up. Stay go, tuned. Go, SM Rangers. We'll be back. Understand how when myself and Sheeta P are late, um, you know, CP3 and Ken DC People's Champ actually allow some homeless guy to come off the street <laughs> and borrow a lighter. Like, that's that's ridiculous. Hey, man, we have to stick with the flow of the show. I can't be putting nobody in a headlock on live TV. Why Why not, dude? You know that's, what I'm saying? That's an assault charge. It's on tape. You could literally be blackface and still make it. <laughs> Wait, what happened? And, and, and still, you could still, you could be in blackface and, and, and be at a Halloween party with a Klansman if it really was a Halloween party. Wait, what happened? Um, oh, um, oh, you haven't caught... Oh, wow. There's a lot to I'm go lost. Here in yeah, a whole um, week. Virginia's racist history ah, has... Thanks, mm, Carol. Virginia's racist history has uh, shown itself, and it's, it's coming out day after day after day. Uh, the governor um, may or may not have... He, you know, he was in a picture with a guy in blackface. You know, that, that's when white people, you know... Um, Used to play they so. Yeah, and you know, paint their paint, paint, paint their paint their faces uh, black and you know, and there, there's so much history behind that. We don't even have that much time to explain all <laughs> no, that. No, we don't. And then, so we're thinking the governor's going to step down because he apologized, but then the very next day, 
the governor, he comes out and says, well, that actually wasn't me. Okay, Shaggy, we get it. Okay, cool. Wasn't me. And then the lieutenant governor is still facing a sexual assault charge that we thought was gone. Did you see the memo that she put out, the, the, the details of the encounter? I yes. actually read most of it. I know you read it. If, if she was in that hotel room, <laughs> that's 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 where it starts. If she was in that hotel room, we go with the why. That's the important part. Mm -hmm. She had a good reason why in her written testimony. Said that he said that she looked like she needed some fresh air, and he had to go to his hotel room to go pick up some papers. And she didn't feel threatened because of who he was to go with him. But then things in the hotel room in the hotel room right. at a at a democratic event. And then from what I read, apparently. He kissed her as they were as he was leaving out the hotel room. She kissed him back. He led her to the bed. Yeah. And before she knew it, he was pushing her head down to his crotch and he had unzipped <laughs> his pants and pulled Jeez. out his penis before she had noticed. And then he forcibly orally raped her. So she was getting she so she got her fresh air. She got her bill clean. <laughs> she got her bill clean on. <laughs> she got her fresh air. Well, I don't know if it was a blue dress on this one though. You know, so so Oy. then and then and then the attorney general oh, just today, like just I'm today. like me, like I'm hanging out with CDP today. We're like getting ready for the show and Word. stuff, and my phone is blowing up, vibrating, and all this stuff. And so when you know when my phone goes off like over and over and over, I'm like I saw, I'm like let you me know, look. and I'm like oh the the attorney general, attorney general, he also admits to being at blackface at a party at a at a Halloween party. But right? he was being a rapper though. So yeah, he was cool. being a rapper. But it's what cool year he was, being was a this taken? <laughs> His was in nineteen eighty. Okay. Northern was in eighty four. But yeah. then they went back and looked at more of the yearbook that the medical school had. And uh -huh. it was a lot more it was actually two students who took a picture in front of a Confederate flag holding uh like old uh revolver. And and nothing wrong with the Confederate flag. I'm okay with that. But they you know? were they were in kind of like the slavery and this get up, was the hat on and the beards, you know. They made it and, kind and, of make it a point of where they were going with that. And and that's my problem. So did you want to use your phone? Yeah, I, I heard it fall. Something fell. Yeah. My phone fell. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Hey, me too movement. Drop What's going on? <laughs> me too movement. It wasn't me. me. Me too movement. I Nothing didn't do it. it. I didn't Nothing do it. Nothing going on. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. I don't, I don't, I don't want the cameras. Shaggy, where are you? He's so, making money so right now. At the, at the end of the day, like if if like for the um lieutenant, you know, lieutenant governor. Right. And by hold, hold on, folks, 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 we have we have a show going on, so we can lower the voice just a little bit. Appreciate it. You know. Um but yeah, so for for me, right? If she was in the hotel, he's guilty. Black man, done. Word. You know, um, the blackface situations, those are, I could understand, right? If the governor said, you know, you know what? Hey, guys, I was at a party. I was young. Or maybe if it was like 1964. <laughs> like, I could understand all of that. I could, I could, I could pitch an argument because I usually argue with myself on all these political issues. Just to you know, figure out the opposing view. Mm. But at the end of the day, it's 1984, and you already apologize for it, and then come out and say, "Ah, actually, guys, it wasn't me." But then I was actually went to a party as Michael Jackson, and I moonwalked. <laughs> and when a reporter asks, "Well, can you still moonwalk?" and he's about to do it, no. And his wife goes, "Hey, dude, no." Like, "Hey, dude, don't don't moonwalk at this press conference." So it wasn't at a Halloween party. I mean, they say that, but we don't know. I, I it may have been a clan rally. I don't know. I mean, you made the <laughs> you made the comparison to the 1964, 84 in Virginia. That's the same thing. I, 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 I slightly disagree with that. I mean, like, I get what, what you're saying, but yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's you know, the Commonwealth. That that's that's. I mean, to is it a shock really that a, a white medical student in 1984 Virginia? Would have some racist or prejudice or some type of bigotry in his background. If it's, you, he he's, he wasn't a sixteen year old kid at a high school get together, and I would have totally understood that. I mean, I would have totally understood. I'm like, okay, I, you know, I understand. You're young. You're stupid. But you're a twenty five year old man in 1984. But the, you you already know that posing next to a clan member or maybe being the guy in the clan hood. We, we don't we don't really know because he doesn't remember. And and now. 
neither one of them were, were him. Apparently. <laughs> so, you know, so now we don't, we don't, we don't know. And, and just the fact that the, the lies and, and by the way, these are all Democrats we're talking about. Oh, everyone. see, well, I, just, I just want to throw that in there. I, I just mean, want to, I just want to throw that in there. Because the Republicans wear it on their sleeve. They don't hide it. They don't put it in yearbooks. They let you know we don't like colored people. Can you show me a picture of Donald Trump in blackface? <laughs> That might be what Putin got over him besides the, the Russian prostitutes peeing on him. Well, Donald Trump is a New Yorker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, it's not a big shock to me. It's, it's, I mean, if you go back into any of these folks' past, any of these long-term politicians, these prominent members of society, lawyers, doctors. Democrat. <laughs> you're going to find something back there. But take it to a step further. If you look at it, somebody made this point that I didn't even think about. This was a medical school. Yep. These are people that are supposed to be taking care of any and everybody, no matter what color, race, creed, or whatever. And this is your mindset? Sure. And these are, you're supposed to be taking care of people, but you're allowed to be a doctor. And your school is seeing this stuff, even though it wasn't the school yearbook, it was a publication by the students. But you know what's going on because you're trying to sweep it under the rug. Hold on. Hold on. You're a little bit wrong there. It was a yearbook publication by the students. Mm. So what you have to understand is that was still approved by the yearbook committee. Uh, and there was someone else found, and this is some of this is not a politician, but there was mm -hmm. someone else found in blackface in the same yearbook. So they submitted these pictures mm -hmm. into that school yearbook. And where was that yearbook found? You know where, Carol? <laughs> I'm afraid at WikiLeaks. In their library. Oh wow! Because what I heard, they said that they, they was supposedly took that book off of the shelves and got rid of all copies. That's why they said it was so hard to find. It's in the library. Wow! So many stories. Sheeta. It's all some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> that about sums it up. Uh, it's awesome. <laughs> it's too much. Bullshit. It's like, too much. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's mm, getting it's messy. I bullshit. mean, we talked about how Trump has changed the face of politics. I love it. And now, with folks going back into folks' past, it's it's about to get messy because there's going to be a lot of folks that's going to be pre-apologizing for stuff that might come out. Like the Attorney General, they didn't even find the stuff. He just, you know, uh, we don't have a press conference. We want to get ahead of this before somebody finds it. How how far down is it going to go? Is, is <laughs> it going to be like, is it going to be like the janitor or the guy who makes the burritos? Like, you know what? I was in blackface too. <laughs> you know, like, I'm the like, one who put it on his but face. But that's how they that's how they did us in movies, though. Like before he yep. did that blackface stuff like that's how we were looking in movies and you know things like that i used to watch things with my grandmother and it it would be white people excuse my french and it, no no don't you know you know what i'm saying yeah. and and black face and that was the thing that's why i said what year was this taken when did he do this you know maybe he doesn't have the same feelings that he had back then i can't say i mean yeah. And, and you know, and like, I, I can't, and I can't, I can't, I can't for the life of me excuse, and maybe I should be able to, but I, I can't for life of me. Like, and um, we have a show coming up this weekend, a special show coming up on True Radio Network. Um, that's it's it's gonna be it's a true talk. My show, by the way, <laughs> hoo ya. And the title is like, my governor is a Klansman, <laughs> because either you know he was the guy in blackface, or the guy in the KKK hood. Or and now all of a sudden he doesn't know which one it is, but it's still on his yearbook page. It's like right cowboy there. hat guy, <laughs> cool picture, you know, cool white guy by a car, uh, and then this black face KKK K -K -K picture. <laughs> like where, I was like, where 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 do the wheels fall off on this? <laughs> it was zero to a hundred, baby. <laughs> come on, like, come on, dude. You know, like, hey man, that, they had no chill back then. They did. They were young, white, carefree in America. What bad, what, what more could you want? You know, where's Lifetime when you need them? Like, where is surviving the Democratic <laughs> Party? Like, I just don't understand it. And and you know, and I understand that you know I, somebody. You know, I was on Facebook arguing this back and forth, and you know, a guy comes up because well, it's the same as the Make America Great Again hat. And I said, okay, you know what? That's that's a valid point, mm -hmm. right? But I can go to Seven Eleven. Pentagon City, damn near anywhere in D.C. and get a Make America Great Again hat, which I don't own, by the way, everyone. Just know that. <laughs> Just know that. But I have no access to a KKK outfit. I don't know where to get one. I have no idea. I know probably some people you can probably contact that can go tell you where to find them at. They wouldn't tell <laughs> me. <laughs> um, real fast on the po political level, on the political spectrum, and we're going to get on to our guest in a second. Um, 
Elizabeth Warren, yeah, I, I love this. you. I miss this. And I am so sorry. And I've said this on several shows. And here she is. She did. She's still doing her apology tour today. She did it today. And she's out there and just apologizing to Native Americans and all this stuff. And I told people she never had a reason to do that DNA test. Not a single goddamn reason. And she did it to try to prove a point. And she stuck. And I, I see the piece about to fall off the stage, what happened? What just happened? Uh, now I'm good. Um, uh, my foot, my foot fumbled. On the, uh, you know, I'm so damn short, I can't sit right. Oh man, uh, my heels, they just. We gonna have to get a harness. Gonna get a harness and a helmet for you up here, sheet, and make sure yeah. you're hey. safe. That that was a football joke, you know. Uh, no, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. <laughs> so, so, so Elizabeth Warren is out, and I'm telling you, I believe Elizabeth Warren and Kamala Harris is the team to take down Donald Trump, or at least was the team, right? And a lot of people don't feel that way. And so now I'm watching Elizabeth Warren apologize over and over and over to the public and to Native Americans for trying to prove that she was somehow Indian, and we and like. Everyone could see that's a white woman, okay? Like, that's just, like, a cool, progressive, hard-ass, like, very, like, intelligent white woman. She's not an Indian, okay? Like, it's it's there. Like, there'll be a little bit of brown. Like, be, <laughs> you know, there'll be, there'll, you know, But I'm be, saying, why apologize? But, Ass had in chief on apologize for nothing. But, but, see, but see, but see, by the way, CP3, I'm glad you did that. Yes. The, the what about the Republicans defense doesn't work anymore. Why not? Because it doesn't. Do you not see their supporters? They don't care. Uh, and that's why they that's why the Dems need to start acting. They have to start. They gotta make a stand. Either you're gonna be a crier or you're gonna protest and fight. You can't have it both ways and flip flop like, oh, I'm gonna sit here with my thumb and cry. Oh, Trump's a big bad man, but then you wanna stand up when he says something that, you know, might offend you or talk about your grandmother. So you but, gotta but, grow, like you said, you gotta grow a backbone. But then we gotta go back to Pelosi and Schumer. And you're talking about a backbone. There is no backbone on that team. That's kind of the point. Like, like for example, <laughs> and the State of the Union, I'm not gonna go to the whole State of the Union. I'm not gonna do all that. That's nah. that, that'll be next week when I use the podium. <laughs> Jacob, can I use the podium next week? I already, right told, him, I I already told him you was looking at that joint. Okay, I'm, I'm using the podium next week. I'm going to do a whole podium thing where I just bash the, the Democrats all day long. Um, when it go, like, Let's take Pelosi, right? So she led this charge for the State of the Union. And they all wore white. And everybody was like, oh my God, they're wearing white. But guess where all the women were sitting? In the back. Nothing new. Like it's nothing slave. new, man. I mean, yeah, it's all a dog and pony show at this point. They're trying to just make it. They're trying to make it more interesting to try to see which way the tide is going to turn before the 2020. Because right now it's up in the air. Because you got crazy Trump doing crazy things. You got crazy Dems doing crazy things. And it's like they're just waiting for the powder keg to blow and see who's going to be left remaining standing. So before we get to our guest, um, I just want to point out that Pelosi is a dog and Schumer is the pony. <laughs> All right, um, Sheeta, would you like to introduce our guest? And I'm going to switch seats. We're going to sit down here. Yes, we have Mike D'Angelo in the building. Woo! What's up? Come on up. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Come up here. We have an exclusive interview, so it's about to go down. And we're moving around. <laughs> Yeah, what's up, what's up, what's up? What's up, what's up? Be legendary, chase your dreams, don't follow. Yeah, what's glad to have on, you on man? the air. So what's going on with you? Bless, how are you? I'm doing good. How's it going tonight, fam? What's going on? How you doing, Kane? Ain't nothing, just down here chilling. Uh, I'm I'm interested because I really do, as Sheeta knows, I'm not really in, currently into the, you know, hip-hop scene, so uh -huh. I've heard some good things about you, so I'm definitely interested to hear Straight how up. you got started in the game and, you know, Straight what up. what inspires you to become, you know, a better artist than what's out here now, because unfortunately, I think most of them are trash. <laughs> <laughs> I just, um, I first want to... Thank the the whole family and the campaign up here. Y'all always doing some legendary things up here, so it's always an honor and a blessing to be here. Appreciate to, um, it. Express progression. Um, music has always just been something I was born into, not sworn into. You know, I came into a beautiful family of strong queens. My grandmother Rose Thomas, as you can see, I got a rose tatted on my face. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so she kind of just set the momentum as far as the, the, the frequencies and the waves of music that transferred through the house, whether it was gospel music. Right down the hall, you had my Uncle Dennis listening to stuff like <clears throat> Tribe Called Quest, Public Enemy, Ice Cube, you feel what I'm saying? Stuff yes, like that. Um, and then my mother, she's a writer, a singer, mm. and she happened to, um, you know, have a long, long relationship and get married to um, Kevin Campbell, KC, everybody know him as KC, which was like real heavy in the industry and stuff nice. like that. So it's just, I've been around it my whole life. That's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah. So, Sheeta, that get to yeah. interview on. Uh, yeah. Let's hear about this young and upcoming artist. <laughs> yeah. So, you've done a lot of things in the community and sure. things like that, you know, like supporting and yeah. walking very far. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain that to everybody? Like, um, what made you want to get like involved into the like the community aspect and helping the young lady that you know mm -hmm. got killed, like basically for no reason? Yeah, um, you know, I come, I'm from the district. I come from a neighborhood called Edgewood, Northeast section. So um, one thing that we did as I was coming up, we always stuck together. You mm -hmm. feel me? Um, I see a big disconnect. Like, I remember the time in the district where you remember the, the all-day bus pass transfers and mm -hmm. stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. If I didn't have one, all I had to do was flag you down and meet you at the back of the bus and you would drop it. And mm -hmm. I just got away from the bus to come, <laughs> okay. you feel me? So, yeah. and, and, and these two people didn't know each other no more. Like, they didn't know each other from a brick on the wall, mm -hmm. but it was that, that open invitation. Yeah. They changed it to, like, these all day pass cars that yeah. you gotta buy mm -hmm. these smart trips they try, they try to tell you it's a smart trip try to make you feel like it's better but guess what would you give anybody your bank card nope you, <laughs> you, you gotta got pay point. for this card you feel me like, yeah. it's, it's how people value the card now so you don't see those those transfers on the ground when you go into the station <laughs> you and you that. might be short 35, 45 yeah, cents you, <laughs> you feel me so you know I wanna bring the, the the line of communication of people saying that hey this is Mike D'Angelo he didn't you see him on TV you hear him on the radio and sign a deal with MSG Cash Money Records and accomplishing all these things and I don't want people to feel like they can't touch me at any given time mm -hmm. so when these kids get murdered in the city instead of me trying to like get the money and throw it at a strip club or something like that. Mm -hmm. I just take all the money from the concert, give it directly to the family of the lost one, help them through the grieving process, Wow! and step on to the next one. I want to get to a point where I'm throwing these events in my concerts to send them off to college, to put them in an atmosphere where they can get lost and captivated within their dreams, not to bury them. You feel me? That's yeah. a beautiful thing, man. That's yeah. that's what sure. we need. That's a, definitely a beautiful sentiment. And hopefully, like you say, one day you don't have to worry about giving the money for funeral arrangements. Yeah. You're giving it to go that's to college or trade somewhere school. where they can have, have, have so many moments that they can pass on generation after generation. We 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 falling short. We just keep falling short. Like kids. Well, you know, yeah. um, let, let me hop in here real fast. Um, yeah. Mike D'Angelo, um, thanks for stopping by. I know things yeah. were running kind of late tonight on everybody's end. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, but we definitely get some music in, um, uh -huh. you know. So what we're going to do is have um, our engineer, Jacob, uh, play Trap House. And oh, yeah, I want yeah. you to explain, you know, the thought process yeah. behind the song right afterwards. Because we've got about, I think, five minutes left. Let's get it. Trap Man. House, my first single um, through uh, Cash Money, MHG. Cash Money Records out yeah. here. Yes, sir. Yeah. Captain. So now, 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 so
sleep in the trial. I fuck a bitch and she tap out. I, I fuck a bitch and she black out. Ballin' like I'm Jerry Stackhouse. Finesse when I dress, I be flat out. My shirt off, my dress, hang my tat out. Got girls everywhere like a frouse. You try me, then I pull it, get out. I be in the kitchen cooking. Whipping, whipping like a whooping. Out the window, I be looking. so upset that time is uh time is a burden tonight I um <laughs> but you know uh mike d'angelo we're definitely gonna have you back and we gotta make sure all of us are synchronized on time yes, sir. hey look man any you time know. that we spend together is a time that we should be thankful for we can't talk about the what is it's an honor to be here i hope our lives journeys meet right back at this same place on greater terms be legendary love oh we will i believe on the Word. wednesday in, in, in april um, so, <laughs> folks, uh, everybody, thank you for tuning in tonight uh, to True Radio right here on WLBS Radio. Yeah. Um, you know, folks, we'll have time for the whole where can we find everybody thing, but, like, we'll do it another time. But, guys, yeah. like, have a great night, and we'll see you soon. Google us, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we out.